G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. It seems like Gaijin is uh, doubling down on their uh, interesting battle rating changes. Some of these changes were detailed in my last video, and of course, like I prefaced in the video before that, these types of videos are not really to necessarily rat out Gaijin or bag them out or just rant on for no particular reason. All of these videos serve a purpose in order to provide feedback towards the game. This is the way that I personally see the game through my experience and I believe that this is sort of reflective of most of what the community sees as well. I don't want to be that kind of person that uh, just rags on the game for no reason, uh, but when it is time to give some constructive criticism, uh, whether that be harsh, whether that be gentle, then this is the time to uh, exercise that as such. Um, I'd also like to let you guys know that I am planning some new merch. Uh, it should be on screen right now. Have a look, tell me what you think. Uh, I still have a couple of other planes to add to this type of design. I'm planning to do sort of like a type of uh, Cold War era merch, if you will. Uh, just let me know what you think. And uh, once that's sort of set in stone, a lot of people do tend to like it or do seem to like it for those that have seen it on my Discord. Um, and I'll try and work out the other few. There are just a couple of little things that I need to sort out. Uh, but apart from that, we're all good on that front, dude. So as long as you guys like it, I'm going to go and make it public. Uh, the other thing I'd like to let you know is that I'm actually going to be live streaming as soon as this video goes up. So come along and join. Come along and say hi. Twitch.tv slash spit underscore flyer. Just as usual. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a good time. Maybe not, but I hope so. Anyway, on to the uh, meat and veg of this particular video. We're going to look at a couple of the extra battle rating changes, and we're also going to look at sort of what I would propose as, uh, in my opinion, the best solution, given the uh, situation. Now, of course, I only speak for Air RB in this case. Uh, I am not really sort of able to speak with any knowledge or authority on uh, Tanks RB, and of course, AB, I just simply don't play, so I don't have any talk over that sort of stuff. I'm mainly here talking about realistic battles in the air sort of sector. So, Gaijin have uh, basically added a couple of planes to this list. Um, they added the SU-7B to go down from 9.7 to 9.3, and the SU-7B KL to go from 10.0 to 9.7. Now, you might think this is this is a good change, but this is actually a really bad change. Uh, the SU-7B hits 1200 at sea level, uh, which is about the same as the F-104s. Not only that, but the SU-7B and BKL are ground attackers, and therefore, being ground attackers should not be considered as purebred fighters. These planes are basically meant for tanks RB. And for those of you that know me, or that have uh, regularly watched my content, you'll know that the SU-7s are one of my favourite ground attackers for Grand RB, uh, for the times that I actually do play it. it they're fantastic planes. They have the uh, Tiny Ivans, and they absolutely ruin everything there. They have a ballistic computer, and they fire them off one at a time. I find these planes really, really good in these particular circumstances, and I think that lowering them is uh, kind of just expecting them to perform like fighters when realistically to me they are strike fighters or ground attackers. As I understand it the Sukhoi design bureau sort of went for their ground attacker type uh, aircraft rather than purebred fighters until later on when they realized hey we're kind of shit at making attackers. So I think the SU-7s could actually stay. I will highlight towards the end of the video which will probably be time stamped if I do this properly there will be sort of a list of what I think is appropriate, but we're just going to go through these changes and see what, uh, I guess, what, what sticks. J32B, down to 9.7, fucking finally. I think this is a long time coming, this plane does not belong at 10.0. It is not a supersonic, it is very fucking powerful, but it certainly has no place fighting 10.0s. It's not a Starfighter, it's not a MiG-19, and it's certainly not an English Electric Lightning. This thing is good, don't get me wrong, but it is only really good against 8.7s because at that sort of speed, uh, oh sorry, at that sort of BR, you can use your speed to its advantage, whereas at 10.0, uh, everything outruns you and most things are starting to at least outpull you, so unless you have a couple of teammates behind you, you're not going to have much fun. The J32B at 9.7, very, very positive change. The uh, next change that we're seeing here is the Jaguar GR1. I 
I don't know, 10.7 to 9.7, uh, sorry, 10.0 to 9.7. Uh, it's an okay change. The Jaguar GR1 doesn't have the Matra Magics, which means that it is less potent than the Jaguar A. However, oh, I don't really know. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, for Ground LB, this is good because you can now pair it with the Vickers MBT, but um, honestly, I don't really see it as uh, anything terribly significant for Ground RB. The GR1, to me, is like a fat T2. It's not anything particularly amazing uh, and it certainly doesn't have the avionics of the uh, T2 and it doesn't have the weapon systems of the T2 so I don't really know about this one uh, we'll see how it pans out but uh, like I said I think I have some better suggestions later on in the video the other changes that we are going to be looking at are the G91 YS finally going back to 9.7 and the algorithm proving that uh, you know what the community I think in this case knows best uh, I know that the War Thunder community has a lot of shit suggestions. Um, for those of you that have spent a long time in the War Thunder community, you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, but these are basically the main changes that we're looking at here that uh, have been passed through for ARRB. Um, just having a quick look through, you can see that nothing else has uh, basically changed. And uh, now we get to sort of what kind of makes me a little bit frustrated. There is no battle rating decompression, and certain problematic jets are not being addressed at all. Now, this sort of really ticks me off, because things like the A7, which has AIM-9Gs at 9.7, sorry, AIM-9Gs, AIM-9Js at 9.7, which are ridiculously powerful, there is basically no way that you can effectively manage dodging AIM-9Js in a MiG-17 or a MiG-15. Uh, you can do it, don't get me wrong, but you have to be extremely well-timed, and you have to be very, very well-skilled. Not only that, like I said, we don't have any battle rating decompression, and what Gaijin is essentially doing uh, is, well, by holding off from battle rating decompression, they're having to down-tier planes to battle ratings where they are going to simply stomp everything below them, but get absolutely crushed above them, uh, to the point where a single plane can ruin an entire battle rating. And I think this is what's going to happen with the MiG-19s. I highly recommend people to abuse the shit out of them to prove how bad that this mistake is by Gaijin. Now, is it going to be offset by the English Electric Lightning, the T2, and a couple of others that go down to 9.7? I don't think so. Uh, not only that, but I don't think it's going to be offset by the F4C going down either. Uh, whilst the F4C does like the avionics, I think there is, again, a better solution. And uh, we're going to actually detail that now. First of all, I think we're going to start with our very top battle ratings. Uh, well, before even we get into that, I really honestly believe that Gaijin should do its best to sort of spread as many vehicles across the uh, BRs instead of leaving those void battle ratings that you can see at uh, 9.3 and 10.3 at the moment, where you only have a few planes. I think it's like the F3 Demon, the F86Ks, CL13A, which never gets played because it's absolute garbage. Uh, and at 10.3, you have things like the F104S, and I think that's about it. The F1. And that's about it. I can't think of any others. Whereas at battle ratings like 10.0, you have like 10 or 12 aircraft. And at battle rating 10.7, you have 6 or 7, where you get those sort of voids where you don't actually see lots of combat at those levels. You don't see many planes because there aren't many. And when they're there, they're not competitive. Now, this reminds me of a time when uh, old 7.7 8.7 was very, very vibrant. Things like the Javelin actually stood a really good chance in battles. Uh, not only that, but they were fairly well balanced because they did get their fair share of up tiers. Basically, from 7.7 .7 all the way to 9.3, you had a fairly equal spread of aircraft. And what this did was, even though you were in a full up tier, there were still plenty of planes that you could well and truly fight and there were only a small number of those fully up tiered planes you had an equal sort of spread from 7.7 8.0 8.3 8.7 and of course if you're in a 9.3 to 8.3 game it would be the 8.7s and the 9.0s that are really fleshing this out so you did have that and it's all sort of gone away for some reason I think this has mainly sort of dealt with uh, or been a result of the uh, CL-13 and of course the, the CL-13B uh, for a start. Uh, I think that the, the uh, Harrier spam has had something to do with it. 
Um, and I think at the same time, the down tearing of the MiG-19s has had a little bit to do with that as well. Um, not only that, but having the T2 there is, uh, I don't know, I think there should be a little bit more evenness of all of the vehicles. And I think at this point in the game, we don't have to force any vehicles into higher or lower spots that they otherwise should be. I think we have a really good case here to put the battle ratings up to 11.0. And I do understand that, say, 11.3 would be fine, but you've got to understand that for a Gaijin to go from 10.7 to 11.3, they really have to put their brave, pill, brave pants on because it's a really big step for them to go one. I think we sort of encourage Gaijin to just take that first step. Just take well, one step at a time uh, by making them, say, go to 11.3. is almost like going up to your boss and asking for a 100% uh, wage increase. They're gonna laugh at you, tell you to fuck off, and that's gonna be the end of the story. Whereas if you ask them for small incremental increases over time, you're more likely to get what you want. And I think this is the case here, uh, not only just being beneficial for us as players, beneficial for Gaijin, of course, because more people are playing a balanced game, and more people are, of course, likely to stay. Honestly, I had a, a fantastic time playing like 7.7 .7 to 9.3, I think it was about 9-ish months ago. Uh, these particular battle ratings were just sort of really well spread. G91s were the sort of flavour of the month, if you will, uh, as well as the Swift. The uh, MiG-15s were very prominent, and of course there was a healthy splash of Sabres, healthy splash of Shenyang F5s, and honestly it was overall very, very positive, but unfortunately that sort of slipped away, and I think that has something to do with a couple of extremely prominent vehicles at that sort of 9397 range. Now, onto the changes themselves, I would like you to sort of discuss in the comments if these are not appropriate or if these are sort of too high, too low. I think these are sort of ballpark battle ratings that we can all sort of generally agree on, uh, but if you do have anything that I've totally missed or completely gotten wrong, then do let me know in the comments. So first of all, we're going to have our two main compatriots here, the MiG-21 BIS and the late Phantoms. Now, whilst the MiG-21 BIS is ever so slightly better in terms of its, uh, I think it's its afterburner, I've been told that it has uh, a special afterburner mode, which is constantly on, which is kind of like WEP on top of WEP, if you will, uh, and the MiG-21 BIS is therefore ever so slightly overperforming, I'm told. Um, so if this is the case, then the bug report that the Zataris has put in would uh, eventually be able to bring the MiG-21 BIS back. But overall, I still see the F4E and the F4EJ as more or less generally kind of sort of on par with the MiG-21 BIS. And the MiG-21 BIS slightly kind of sort of on par with the F4E and the F4EJ. Therefore, I would suggest that these two planes and these two planes alone sit at 11.0. Uh, this sort of gives a dynamic of MiG versus uh, Phantom again, or, you know, America versus Soviet Union. Uh, I also think that this particular spot uh, is the most appropriate for these kinds of planes. Uh, I think any sort of variation of, say, J-35s or Mirages that have semi-active radar homing uh, missiles or more than four air-to-air -air missiles could potentially go to 11.0 as well. Uh, I see sort of like future versions. I think it's the Mirage 4, I'm not quite sure, or the F1. I, I can't remember. Someone is going to let me know in the comments and I really appreciate that. So with these two at 11.0 uh, and my reasoning I believe to be sort of sound, they all have flares, they all have RWR, they all have good radar, they all have lots of air-to-air -air missiles and they all have semi-active radar homing capabilities. Now, we're going to take a step down to 10.7, and at here, I would put the F4C for a start. However, I wouldn't leave it as it is. I would currently have uh, suggested to give it AIM-9Gs, uh, perhaps even AIM-9Js, and of course, AIM-7Es to sort of keep it there at a competitive level. To me, I see the F4C as kind of on, uh, on par or at some sort of level in terms of its raw performance to the MiG-21 SMT and MF, which would also be at 10.7, but of course it falls short in the weapon systems, and at that point is the reasoning why I would give it AIM-9Gs, because they're not quite 9Js, which are comparable to R60s. I would see the 9Gs as uh, slightly lesser, but of course it has double the missiles, which gives it a little bit more of an edge. 
Of course, I would also throw the FGR2 here, which I've actually forgotten in my list on the forum post, which I've made. Uh, and I would also be giving that 9Gs. But you know what, if it gets 9Ds, it's okay at 10.7 as well. Like I said, 21 SMT and MF can be 10.7. Both of these planes are quite capable. They have very powerful uh, afterburning capabilities. They have good climb rates, good speeds, and of course R60s that are radar slavable. J35D, also 10.7. Mirage 3, also 10.7. F104G for the uh, ROC, 10.7 as well. F104S, 10.7. And F1, 10.7. Whilst the F1 isn't particularly strong, I do think it is decent with the AIM-9Ps as well as the avionics that it has on board. Personally, I see these planes as almost good at the level of the 21 bis and the F4E and EJ, but not quite. There's something a little bit lacking. Maybe it's flares in basically all of the cases. Uh, maybe it's a certain level of performance that's kind of lacking. Maybe it's the number of missiles. Maybe it's the avionics. These are the types of things that are a little bit lacking and therefore require a uh, slight lowering in their battle rating. Moving on to the 10.3s, we're going to be having a look here at the T2, the F104G, J, A and C. I might be a little bit wrong in the A and C there, do let me know in the comments because I'm a little bit hesitant. I'm just going to throw them up there to be a little bit safe. Of course, every single MiG-19, that is the 19S, the 19PT and the J6A, and of course the SU-7 BKL being the sort of, I guess we can call it an attacker equivalent to the MiG-19s. It's basically a MiG-21 body with MiG-19 wings. Uh, at least that's what it feels like to fly. Uh, and of course the uh, SU-7 is a dedicated ground attacker with six of those uh, tiny, tiny Ivans. So all of these planes are getting to a point where they're lacking something major whether it be avionics, whether it be weapons, whether it be flight performance. For example, the uh, T2 might not have great flight performance, but it has excellent weaponry and it has excellent avionics. So I think it kind of makes a good 10.3 in that respect. We've also got to remember that these 10.3s are going to be the ones facing our 9.3s, so we need to be careful with who we match them up with. Uh, throwing, say for example, MiG-19s at 10.0 would be good and well, but they kind of face uh, things like the F-Saber, and uh, I don't really, personally, I don't really like that. I think it should be a little bit more of a gap, and that's why I'm going to put them at 10.3. I do find them okay enough to sort of face those 11.0s. They're obviously not going to be great, but I think it's better that these guys are the ones that sort of take the L and uh, sort of suffer just a little bit in order for the 9.3s and the 9.7s to have a little bit more of a good time. I think if we are to make a void battle rating, I think it's going to have to be 10.3. We're going to have to pick one, and I think 10.3 is the uh, most, most appropriate here. So, moving on to the 10.0s, we have the A7D. Now, if this thing had its AIM-9Js removed, it could probably sit at 10.0 as well. Uh, I'm mostly here looking at its gun performance, particularly in a close air support role in ground RB. 10.0 is insanely good for this particular plane. Um, I've seen plenty of like mediocre pilots, and I don't mean this to sort of offend uh, certain people. Like uh, Justin Plays is a fantastic tanker, but he's not the greatest of pilots, and I think he'll agree with me. He's a good mate of mine. I'm not throwing shade at him. I'm just saying that he is a lot better as a tanker than he is at, a, as, at uh, flying, and I've seen him absolutely clean up in the A7D without using too much uh, brain power. Now, in this particular case, I think the A7D has extremely strong gun casts, but it also works really well for Air RB, uh, not only just in an air to air role, but strafing ground units. If you had a concentrated four man of this, uh, and if you had a couple of randos, you could very easily clean up all the ground targets on a map before the match really even gets going. So, having this at 10.0 brings it a little bit closer to those planes that are a little bit more on the potent side, leaving it within range of the uh, F4EJ and the MiG 21 BIS, uh, but also sort of dragging it up on and away from the nine, oh, the 8.7s that have a hard time catching it. Not only that, but it also has flares, it also has RWR, and these can help it in a situation where you're facing things like R60s or uh, AIM-7s. So, our next 10.0 here are the 
early MiG-21 variants, that is the MiG-21F and the J-7 II. These two planes are basically identical, even if the J-7 II is a little bit, uh, has a little bit more thrust and an extra gun, I think, um, but they're basically the same plane, they basically fly the same way and should pretty much sit at 10.0. I think 10.0 is good because they can kind of tussle with things like the uh, F4E and the EJ. They're not great against them, but I do think that, uh, again, if someone is to take the L, I don't think they should be 9.7 because uh, can you imagine flying around in your A5 Sabre and coming up against the MiG-21 that can just sort of do everything against you? I don't really find it fair, and I think at this particular battle rating, it is sort of roughly in the ballpark. Do let me know in the comments once again. Sitting at 10.0 for our Brits are the F6, that is the Lightning F6, the Hunter F6, and the Harrier GR1. SRAMs should not be below 10.0 at all. Um, Gaijin have got it correct with the SRAMs. I think they should stay where they are. As for the Lightning, it is extremely powerful in terms of its raw performance. You'll see some background footage, hopefully, and uh, the Lightning F6 is extremely strong here. Uh, if you play it correctly, you're basically untouchable. There's not a whole lot that your opponents can do. Um, so for me, the Lightning F6 is really a 10.0. At 10.0, we're also going to throw the SU-7B, uh, just because it's a worse BKL in terms of its ground capabilities, but it is slightly better in terms of its air capabilities. Uh, so it's okay at 10.0. I don't really see it as a problem there. And of course, it is a ground attacker, so it isn't really meant to be particularly potent. We're also going to be throwing the Yak-38 and the Yak-38M. Both of these things should be 10.0 because R60 should not be at 9.3 or 9.7. Uh, the plane is also a ground attacker, so it shouldn't really be uh, anywhere near this sort of level of potency. Uh, I think 10.0 is a lot more appropriate because the more powerful missiles will suit the combat a little bit better. The uh, plane itself also does 1200 at sea level, so good luck catching it in an 8.3 Cougar. Yeah, I, I, I said that right, 1200 at sea level. Of course, it is an absolutely dog shit plane otherwise, but honestly, the GAC-38 as a VTOL plane should really be a meme. Uh, and the R60s, whilst the, being the only redeeming qualities of the GAC-38, uh, should not be at a low battle rating as they are. As for the Jaguars, like I said, I don't really see any benefit to them moving down to 9.7. Uh, so 10.0 is a really good spot for both Jaguars. Even though the GR1 is not quite as good, uh, I am told that it could fit flares. Uh, and that would go sort of in terms of in replacement of its drag shoot uh, and I'm told that the Jaguar A gets them as default which uh, would make the Jaguar A just categorically better but uh, honestly I don't really see a problem with the GR1 and the A being at the same battle rating at 10.0 if the battle ratings are spread out a little bit more like this. Uh, both Q5s can sit at 10.0. I do despise or not despise but I don't really like the Q5s. Uh, they're both pretty crap but um, honestly 10.0 is good enough for both of them. They're not particularly flash, but at the same time, they do possess a fair amount of speed, uh, and that does put them away from the sort of 8.7s once again, giving them a little bit more breathing room. So, these particular planes, sort of, the way I think about this is I think of the three major categories. I think of your performance, as in your uh, acceleration, your sort of turning capabilities, roughly, um, meaning like your wing loading, your flap speeds, all this sort of stuff, uh, the the way the plane sort of performs in a, in a dogfight, in a turn, um, and of course it's energy capabilities, it's acceleration, it's top speed, it's climb rate, all these sorts of things. Um, and of course we have the other two categories which are avionics, which refers to your RWR, flares or radar, and weaponry, which is your guns or your missiles. Um, and of course, if you're a ground attacker, you're bombs and rockets. Uh, but in the case of the Q5, it's more a case of performance and uh, not quite avionics, but not quite weaponry. But I think the Q5 just has a little bit more performance being based on the MiG-19 there. So all of these planes sort of major in two of these categories. So they, they do well. Uh, they, they can only pick two. You, you've got like a little smorgasbord of three, and they can only pick two of them. Uh, and unfortunately, they can't get the best of both worlds. That's why they said at 10.0 and not 10.3 or 10.7. So moving down to 9.7, we're kind of mostly there. Uh, we have most of it almost all in order. Harrier GR3 already 9.7, AV8C already 9.7, uh, all the F100s already 9.7, the FGA9 already 9.7. 91YS and the J32B are all 
I think these these guys are either really capable subsonic fighters like the uh, J32B or the G91YS, but uh, not quite at the level of the earlier supersonics or of course of the uh, more matured subsonics. Uh, the only exception there is the F100 which is a supersonic, uh, but this particular plane is sort of early in terms of its uh, development and its capabilities. Whilst it is, in my opinion, better than the Hunter F6 in terms of its performance, uh, which is sort of where I take my preference, I don't think it should be at the battle rating. I, I think it should be at 9.7. I think that's fair. So, onto our 9.3s, we have both CL13 Mark V and CL13B Mark VI's. I know the CL13A Mark V is a sort of pretty crappy 9.3, but I think it has to stay there because 9.0 is just a little bit too strong for it. We have our boy the F3H at 9.3, shouldn't be moved to 9.7, you may see battle rating uh, footage in the background, you may also see a video on it soon. AV8A I think is a fairly decent 9.3 but could be a 9.7, let me know in the comments, I've never actually flown it. Uh, but as I understand it, it's basically like a GR1, but without the SRAMs. So F86K, again, also 9.3. F5, also 9.3 at the moment. And the Buccaneer, which is also 9.3. In general, any F Sabre that has AIM-9Bs should also be 9.3. That means the F40 Sabre as well. So these particular jets uh, basically don't have the capability to appropriately fight jets with larger sort of volumes of high potential uh, high potency missiles like uh, 9G's, 9D's, 9J's, nor the performance to fight jets like the F-104S which is why I'm sort of removing them from that uh, threshold of the 10.7's uh, like the Mirage, J-35 and MiG-21 SMT which they currently fight which is really really spooky uh, if you think about it. Whilst we do have a quantitative matchmaker to keep that uh, at bay I don't think that that should be uh, a thing honestly. I think it would be a little bit more uh, appropriate for these planes to not be fighting these, and that's why I've put them here. They're fairly decent though, as uh, as the sort of bottom feeders for that 10.3 MiG-19s F-104 basics, basically. Uh, and of course as we get lower to 10.0, uh, the uh, English Electric Lightnings, the MiG-21s, and the Jaguars and Hunter. I think these are really, really good as bottom feeders. If that's going to be our baseline and the 10.0s or the 10.3s are going to be the top, I think that is going to be a really, really nice matchmaker. Some other changes I would uh, basically have done if I were Gaijin, I would throw all the G91s with 4 m 9 bs to 9.0. I think whilst you do get a massive performance hit with carrying these m 9s I think having the 4 m 9s gives you just enough sort of material, enough resources, enough utility to deal with the 9.0s and some of the 10.0s. Um, I also think that if you go clean wings, you can deal with these uh, 9.0s very, very easily. Uh, and whilst it's not quite on the top of the, uh, of, of the food chain as such, I do think the G91s are quite potent. G91 R3 could potentially maybe go to uh, 9.0 as well just because of its ground capabilities and it being a ground attacker uh, should not be on par with its fighter counterparts but I think that is more left to discussion in the comment section below. Please be civil once again. Another change that I would make finally is my baby the Javelin should go down to 8.3. I might have a little bias on this one but I don't really think it is appropriate at 8.7. It only does about 1,040 kilometers an hour on the deck before it rips its wings uh, and at uh, higher altitudes it doesn't have the acceleration and it also doesn't have great sustained turning believe it or not because it doesn't have the acceleration. It just sort of dumps all of its speed and that's all it's got. So I think 8.3 is actually a little bit better, even though it will put it up against 7.3s. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Maybe we need a little bit more decompression. So anyway, ladies and gents, these are my suggestions for the battle rating changes. I know this video is starting to get on 30 minutes, which is a little bit fucking ridiculous. I've only made one or two other 30 minute long videos. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for uh, giving me the watch time and for, of course, helping me with the channel growth. We're almost at 45,000 subscribers. We're growing really, really nicely. I really thank you for all of it. Thank you so much for basically making my December and January. A lot of YouTubers sort of pull out of January because it's uh, 
quite frankly not worth it in terms of your your growth st statistics uh, just to sort of give you a couple of stats over the top of my head um, I get a summary of views and they've gone up by 128% in the last 28 days watch time in hours has gone up by 140% and revenue has gone up by a mere 52% which is why a lot I don't do that if you hear a screen door shaking and a cat meowing that means I have to let muffin in so uh, without further ado I'm gonna end the video here I'll see you guys on stream thank you very much for watching take care and I'll catch you next time